Welcome again. My name is Greg Parsons. I'm the curator here at Camp Blanding Museum. Uh, today we're going to talk to you about another weapon in our collection, and that's the USM 1919A4 30 caliber air-cooled machine gun. You see here. Browning Light Machine Gun, model 1919A4. This was the main 30 caliber machine gun used by U.S. forces in World War II. Uh, they still had some of the M1917s around, the water-cooled version. But they were much heavier, hard to handle. They were more for fixed positions. Um, the U.S. between the wars were interested, or right after uh, 1917, were interested in coming up with a lighter version of the 30 caliber machine gun. So they removed the water jacket and, uh, and eventually come up with a heavier barrel so that the weapon could fire more rounds before the barrel heated up significantly. Uh, they put a jacket on there for, to lay, allow air to get in around the barrel, but most of the rest of the components were all similar to the 1917. And what comes out of that is the 1918. They go through several variations, and the final one as we get into World War II is the A4 version. Uh, during the war, they do come out with a 1919A6 version, uh, and I'll speak about that one here in a little bit. But the basic features of this weapon, you'll see here, it's mounted on its tripod, which was an M2. It has a traversing and elevation mechanism on the back so that from a fixed position, you can very finite control of elevation and uh, your windage left and right. Or you could unlock it and or remove the, the traversing and elevation mechanism so that the gun was basically could move free. Uh, on this, you have for quick use, some basic sights. You just got a, a notch peep in the back. Uh, the front sight was that you could able you could flip that up, so you have a front post. And for a longer range, more precise fire, the rear sight also flipped up. Now you have a peep, and the uh, sights were adjustable out to about uh, I think uh, 1,800 yards. Ours were in yards. Uh, the weapon fires the standard U.S. 30 caliber M2 ball or 30-06. It fires it from a cloth belt, which was 250 rounds, which would come in this ammo tube. At the end of the belt, you've got a, a metal tab, which made it easier for loading the belt into the weapon. The gunner would just reach through, pull the belt up until he got the ammo would click into the first notch. At that point, the gunner would reach forward, pull the charging handle back, which would pull the round over into the uh, actually the feed path, so that now the uh, the the loading Paul could grab the barrel, or grab the round, he would charge it again. At that point, he would pull the round out of the belt and load it into the chamber. Um, and the gunner would pull the trigger at that point. As the weapon fires, it's dropping the fire case out of the bottom, grab the next round out of the belt, feed it in there. Rate of fire was about 600 rounds a minute with this weapon. Nowhere near what the German MGs had, uh, but slower rate of fire because it was strictly air-cooled, you could change the barrel on this weapon, but it was a little more difficult than what the Germans had. But because of the heavier barrel and the slower rate of fire, they could fire a lot more rounds before they had to worry about changing the barrels. The light machine gun can be fired at a rate of 60 rounds per minute for prolonged periods. Its maximum usable rate is 150 rounds per minute, but the weapon can only fire at this rate for very brief periods without overheating. A spare barrel is carried for each gun. And because of this, the eliminating the water jacket going with a much lighter tripod, uh, the intent was to have this weapon available to go with an infantry squad if they were on a patrol. So a squad would go out, 12-man squad would go out on patrol. They could actually have a 1919 go with them on that patrol. And there's fair, several cases uh, during the war in Europe. Uh, uh, patrols uh, are uh, infantry squads out on a patrol, the 1919s with them. As the patrol crosses a the road, they start taking fire from a German MG. The 1919 crew, basically, they just drop the tripod in the road, throw the gun on the tripod, load the belt, and start returning fire. And they actually take the machine gun, German machine gun out. Um, and so it proved to be a fairly easy weapon to move, even though it's still like 32 pounds. 
Um, and then the later version, the A6 version, they actually have a carry handle that's mounted to the shroud. It has a bipod, so they eliminate the need for the uh, tripod. And it has a, a metal butt that clips over the back here so that the gunner can hold it into his shoulder and use it to aim with and fire. And uh, that was an attempt to make it more of a maneuverable, lighter type machine gun, although it probably wasn't really that much lighter. Uh, one of the interesting pieces out of this and talking to a lot of veterans and a lot of machine gunners from World War II, um, they all, several of them have mentioned that uh, they used to get 30 caliber armor piercing rounds that they usually shot out of these. Um, and that became their favorite round as the war progressed because the 30 caliber armor piercing round proved to be a very interesting, a very nasty round, so to speak. Um, you could penetrate significant armor plating with it about up to seven inches of reinforced concrete and easily could go through about a 24 inch diameter oak tree without a problem. Uh, one gentleman we spoke to in the museum one day, he was a 1919 gunner. Uh, his unit was on the north shoulder of the bulge during the Battle of the Bulge. He said they had set his machine gun up to cover a road intersection and basically told him, hey, there's no friendlies in front of you. If anybody comes up on this road intersection, open up and let them have it. The gentleman said that he had had he had a 250 round belt of all armor piercing rounds. So at that point, he loads that belt into his machine gun. He said about dusk of the first day, a German half track comes up the road, pulls into the intersection and stops. The back door opens. He waited for two German soldiers to get out and then he opened up. He said he put the whole 250 round belt into that German half track. By then it was dark. Uh, so they waited. The engine continued to run for a while. Then it finally died, ran out of fuel apparently. And uh, then the next morning, they sent a couple of guys down to check it out. He said the two Germans that had gotten out were dead on the ground. The half-track crew was in the back. They were all dead. And about four other German riflemen were in the back of the half-track. They were all dead. He said you could see where the armor-piercing rounds went through one side plate, everything in the middle, out the back side plate, and buried in the ground behind the weapon. So the armor-piercing round proved to be a very uh, effective round. Um, and it was intended predominantly to be used by the machine guns, although there are a lot of stories about riflemen using them out of their rifles. Anyway, so the USM 1919 A4 30 caliber machine gun. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dr. George Kressman, and I'm the historian here at the Camp Landing Museum. I'd like to invite you to do two things. First, I'd like to invite you to come visit us at the Camp Landing Museum. We're open every day from noon to four. Secondly, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the Camp Landing Museum uh, channel here on YouTube. Join us and look at the other uh, history videos that we've provided.